Okay. All right. Hey guys, welcome back. JP's World of Wrestling. Once again, I am your man JP. And once again, Joe is joining me. Hey guys. And, and today, we are talking about this guy. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I've got so many memories of watching this guy on TV. Uh, like I said, he's, he was a brawler. He was, those are too super technical. It wasn't a high flyer. Yeah. He was just going there, beat the crap out of somebody. And if needed, the 2x4 would come into play. Yeah. But I don't have the 2x4, but that's okay. Because Hacksaw Jim Duggan, he's, he was All-American. He was, you know, USA all the way. You know, he's no nonsense. Yeah. He won the very first Royal Rumble. Yes, he did. Yeah. 1988. Yeah. If that was when it was on just regular basic cable. Uh, it wasn't a pay-per-view, but it was only 20 guys. But nevertheless, it came down to him and the one-man gang, and he outsmarted the gang that day. Yeah. If I think back about my childhood, there were guys that I would put in a top 10, for mm -hmm. sure, Yeah. of entertaining wrestlers of all yes. time. Right. And when I was young, you know, I had really bad issues with attention. Right. So a lot of guys like Bret Hart, mm -hmm. who I have gone since that time on to as an adult to really appreciate yeah, because of what he did for the business at a really difficult time where Hogan had kind of stepped out. Right. And, um, but when you're 13, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not into all that. I'm not into resting holds. I don't really understand what he's doing right. when he's clinching somebody's arm and he's in the ropes and right. I, the excellence of X. I didn't get it. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of straight up, entertainment my top guys were always the undertaker yokozuna hogan hacksaw jim duggan andre the giant and then past that list i'd have to stop and and, and actually go through some of my my figures to right to kind of sort out you know who else might fit in the top 10 but right he was a straight ahead just grizzly bear yeah didn't have a complex series of move lists or anything like that he would just get in there and one of the first guys I remember doing like a spear-esque shoulder tackle. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And there was nothing fancy about his promos either. It was just basically, I'm going to kick your butt and <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if it's fancy. He, and even in his promos, he would even say, there's not going to be any go-behind or takedowns. It's just going to be a fight. And right. I'm going to do what I do best. And that's beat people up, tough guy. Yeah. Then he'd give a big ho, oh, you know. We could probably show the viewers a special treat if you'll stand by. Should I go get LJN with 2 by 4 You could do that. All right, let me duck out. I'll be right back. All right. And while he does that, I'll just tell you that uh, I have I have two of these. I have to have two Hacksaw Jim Duggins. I, the other one has the 2 by 4 but perhaps one day I'll get the 2 by 4 And... Now, I've got a couple of treats here for you. Yeah. Um, first, before we reveal the LJN, which was a much older figure, I actually do have three of these Hasbros. Jason, this is the Hasbro that you and I played with at 13 years of mm -hmm. age, and that is the, because I've never gone back to recollect the 2x4, right. that is the 2x4. Looks like it's kind of bent due to weather or storage but no this is the one that 31 years ago you and i sat there and would work other hasbros oh, over yeah. with that is the figure and the yeah. actual two by four that we played with mm -hmm. absolutely i'm trying to remember angles i know we had a, a moment i think with the repo man probably kind of worked him over a little bit yeah here is the um ljn Hacksaw Jim Duggan oh, yeah. with 2x4. Now, in all fairness, I actually don't know if that 2x4 is an official issue. I got this on eBay years and years later, wow. and, and I don't know if that's an actual... So, well, you know, for the, real collectors out there that are seeing that, I can't tell you for sure. Well, but the interesting thing about the LJN 2x4, it's actually made of wood. Yeah. No, and this one is, for sure. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, 
Yeah, that's and, and a great great figure because it 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 works this duality of being able to wield the two by four. Yeah, in terms of holding it, but were you to remove that, he's in a great play action pose. Exactly. And I'm just gonna say it. So so, Jason, you and I here. I'm I'm pushing you out of frame with all these toys. I got all these toys. I'm pushing him out of frame. Yeah. Um, the simplicity of figures like this. Yes. Made them so that you could actually play with them. I agree. Yes. Somewhere after the Jax series in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Yeah. Now, you're better at this history stuff mm -hmm. than I am, but I want to say at around 2004, some, 5, 6. So, yeah, somewhere in there. Then they went all fully opposable and wrists move and elbows, and you couldn't do anything with them. No. You know. And, and I've noticed that it's not just wrestling figures. Every single action figure line now, everything has to be fully posable. Even when they try to come up with like new He-Man figures, they're all fully posable. New yeah. new Ninja Turtle figures are all fully posable, and I don't need that. Right. And I question why anybody else needs that either, because right. They I mean they look cool if they're just sitting on a shelf. On a shelf, right. But if you're actually trying to use them and having matches with them and do moves, they're just the posability gets in the way. You end up getting a guy with yeah. his wrist that's always like yeah. this, and yeah, yeah, you get them all kind of worked up into a, a, a good fight stance yeah and you throw one right hand and the whole arm goes you know like this and right then you so, twist it back into place and it's just so you know we were in a lot of ways with our rudimentary figures we were really fortunate as children because um your imagination yeah is what made up for the fact that you couldn't move ankles and wrists and all of this right um you know you'd throw a throw a punch and the figure didn't contort into a pretzel, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I mean, I'm all about the pose as well because even even some of these older figures, like they would come out with guys that where their hands are like wide open, and yeah, I have imagination and I can probably find a way to still make it work, but I still prefer stuff like this. This is a perfect representation of Hacksaw Jim Duggan's wrestling style. Right. Just exactly. Pun punches, clotheslines, that sort of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was a super fun wrestler, and again, even as a even as a young child, yeah, um, a lot of the more thoughtful storylines that would develop on later on in wrestling, right. when you and I got really bored with it, right? Um, which I can honestly say probably didn't kick in until 1998. Yeah, this is probably a totally other uh, podcast. You'll have to ask me someday the day that wrestling died, because apart from my collection which is a throwback to yeah. all of this stuff i have not actively watched wrestling in almost 20 years right and i and i i mean that i couldn't even tell you today triple h i i know some names i don't have a clue what's going on in wrestling <laughs> yeah i mean i still follow it to some extent and i i continued watching it to some extent i didn't enjoy it as much like i still watched in the late 90s i still watch wwf but it wasn't as fun. It wasn't as much. It wasn't as epic as it was. Back in those days, I was primarily WCW. I was, in, I was interested in what they were doing. Yeah. But WWE, if they had all this, like, this garbage going on where women were half naked. And yeah. They had, had, like, porn star characters and pimps. And it was awful. It was just, I couldn't watch it. It, it had fallen so far from, uh, from where it was when we had loved it on the top of the yeah. mountaintop where it was... Simple storylines. Good guy versus bad guy. It's Hulk Hogan versus King Kong Bundy. Yeah. And I want to say 1996, 97, 98. Yeah. That's the Attitude Era, right? 97 was kind of the start of the Attitude Era. But, like, immediately after Bret Hart left, that's when everything, like, immediately went straight down the crapper. Yeah. And... So, so Bret, if, if there's any chance in the world that you were to ever see this... Um, we owe you an apology because we as kids had no idea what you were trying to do for the business Yeah, to keep some of those cultural values intertwined in the storylines and, and actually wrestling, like and, actual and, wrestling. And people talk about how Bret Hart was like a really low drawing champion, but if you, if you think about it, I don't think it was Bret Hart's fault. I think it was the fact that the wrestling fans were kind of changing and they were kind of wanting... Something else besides like the good guy that was a wrestler. He could, he was, because you know, just whenever Bret Hart turned heel, and whenever he became a bad guy, then 
it was still it was just crumbling it, yeah and and i don't think brent could save it no it's like when you have the coo of a company yeah. for 20 years yeah the new guy is gonna or a pastor let's do a church you have a pastor of a church mm -hmm. he's done his thing for 20 years when that pastor steps down he probably should leave that church because the flock uh, are going to look to him for leadership. Yeah. And the ones that like the new guy are going to want the old guy out of the way. So, so Brett, he came in after how many years had Hogan been at the abs, the whole brand, yeah. everything's red and yellow, every WrestleMania, red and yellow, red and yellow, Hogan, you know, it's Hulkamaniac. Yeah. Um, Hulkamania. I don't care. Like who think about it. Who would you have put the belt on at that time? Who could have carried People's expectation when they were kind of getting tired of Hogan and now yeah. they tried with the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. And that was a that was a horror show. Yeah. It didn't work. It didn't work at all. And Brett was really kind of the only option they had. And I think Brett, I think he did a really good job. I mean, he had, you know, the pink and black, and he had a different wrestling style. He had a completely different wrestling style than Hogan. Yeah. And but ultimately, you know and also Brett didn't have as many epic opponents as Hogan did. He right. had he had guys he had like occupational gimmicks. He had circus clowns and garbage men <laughs> and dentists. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. What was his name? Uh I Isaac Yankum DDS. Isaac Yankum, who later became Kane. I remember Bastion Boger. Bastion Boger and um, Duke going, the Dumpster Drosy. Duke the Dumpster Drosy. Yeah, all these. It was a really gimmick and, heavy time. And Henry O. Godwin, you know, H O G Hog, and Phineas I. Godwin, P I G. P he had like hog farmers. He had guys like that. Right. Where, where, where Hogan had right. these giant guy like Andre the Giant, giant King guys, Kong Bundy, yeah. and Mister Wonderful, and Macho Man. And 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 I will just end on this. I think one of the best matches that Yokozuna ever had was his match against Bret. Yes. And I want to say it was not WrestleMania 9. It was a match they had before that. Right. Do you remember what event that was? I remember Brett selling Yoko in a way that made you feel like he was being injured for real. Yeah, well, they, they wrestled at WrestleMania 9. That was like the infamous one where Hogan came out at the end. And, but then they wrestled the next year at WrestleMania 10 after Brett had lost to Owen. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking about. Yeah, Brett lost to Owen, and that, but then he got to wrestle Yokozuna at the end. And he won the title, and and uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper was the guest referee in that match. I remember, and I remember after it because all the all the all the good guy wrestlers came down to the ring to help Brett celebrate, and then Owen Hart came down, and was mouthing the word "What about me?" Because <laughs> he had beaten Brett Hart later or earlier that evening, That's and he, funny. He, he was mouthing the word "What about me?" Yeah, he wanted his slice. Well, we've probably gotten way off the rails of Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Anyway, but... I love Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Here's two of the Hasbros, and, and that's the LJN Hacksaw. Are we, now, wait a minute. Are we looking at a variant here? Oh, no. Okay. No, it's just the lighting. The lighting. I thought maybe he had different trunks. But... So, anyway, if there's any shred of hope that Hacksaw sing the Hacksaw, I love you, and thank you very much. Ho! And if so if you're new here, go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.